This is the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. And while it might look very much like the S23 Ultra, which looked like the S22 Ultra, it's actually one of the most fascinating phones of the last decade. I'd actually peg it as the phone that's about to reignite the entire battle of the smartphone. And starting today, I'm gonna to be fully switching over to it in place of my iPhone. Why? Well, a bunch of important hardware improvements, but most significantly, this is the first phone to come with Galaxy AI, which is a lot cooler and a lot more useful than the gimmick I was expecting it to be. But the first thing you're gonna notice is the updated design. It's kind of like if you took the S23 Ultra and dressed it up for the red carpet, and I think it's a stunner. Everything is flatter and less rounded. Even the end of the S Pen is squared off. It's almost like they just took a shaver to their last phone, but without being so boxy that it just feels like a brick. Plus points for the new satin finish that hides fingerprints even better, and side rails that are completely matte now and textured instead of high gloss. And I am happy there's finally some new colors. You got a funky yellow, a two-tone violet, which if nothing else is unique, and of course the gray, which feels like a very clear winning option, made even greater by the fact that it kind of changes color as the light catches it. But let's be honest, the best colors will probably end up as Samsung website exclusives like they always do. But yeah, I have a feeling this gray one especially is gonna draw a lot of comparisons to the iPhone 15 Pros. And for good reason, this is the most similar I can remember iPhone and Samsung flagships ever looking. Not just because of the color and the finish, but also just like the iPhone, Samsung has swapped out the material of the phone's entire frame from aluminum in this case to titanium. And that's awesome. The titanium is stronger, it's better at conducting heat from the inside of the phone to the outside. And while it is a heavier metal than aluminum, because it's tougher, you need less of it. Meaning that the weight of the phone has actually gone slightly down instead of up. And also, like the iPhone, this is now a flat display. For the first time on one of the company's top end models since like 2015? Now, I've personally always liked the smooth feel and the futuristic look of a curved screen. And so part of me can't help but feel like this is a step back, but I'm willing to concede here. I can totally see how there is practical benefit to a flat screen. Flat screens are sturdier. They're easier to apply screen protectors to. They can feel a bit sharp on your fingers, which is something that I was persistently telling off the older iPhones for doing. But Samsung's mitigated that with the way the side rails very smoothly curve into it. And what I love is that the flat screen here has allowed Samsung to, for the first time ever, completely even out the screen borders. Praise the Lord. We took our sweet time getting here, but isn't symmetry just the most beautiful thing? Especially paired with a front camera that's now even smaller and even less of an interruption. The only thing they haven't fixed, and I'm gonna keep banging on about this until they do, is the sharp corners. Look, I get it, the phone's got a pen, it's like a notebook, but that doesn't change the fact that this aesthetic differentiation causes very real hand indentation. Oh, and then also with these S24s, Samsung's launching new flip suit cases, which are like smart cases that will also change your phone's wallpaper to match. And then a really cool spin on the idea of a case that's also a grip for your hands and a stand. I'm very curious to see how this mechanism holds up over time. Anyways, design aside, the new phone also has a bunch of hardware upgrades, most fairly expected, but that doesn't mean meaningless. The base amount of RAM, for example, has finally gone up from eight to 12 gigabytes. About time for an ultra phone to be Honest. But nonetheless, this is another one of those things that have bugged me about past phones that we can just tick off and be happy about now. Samsung's changed up the design of their internal speaker funnel, which gives the sound more space and should improve the clarity of audio. Last year's phone supported Wi-Fi 6E, this year supports Wi-Fi 7, which is actually kind of crazy. It's up to four times faster than 6E if you can find a router and a supplier willing to actually give it to you. It's very early days right now. The screen is a big one. So your responsiveness is up by 12%. So your inputs will feel just that little bit more real time, but more noticeably, brightness. Before it topped out at 1,715 nits, which already to me felt absurdly bright and very able to hold its own in direct sun, now it is 2,600. I don't even know what to say about this one, but. I have a feeling we'll be seeing a lot of extreme brightness phone screens this year, mostly so that you can not just see your screen, but also preserve the high contrast, high dynamic range experience, even if you're in bright sunlight. Now, I'm definitely someone who would get more excited for a screen that focuses on preserving battery as opposed to getting even brighter. But to be fair, Samsung's saying this one is made of a new material that does that too. And then the glass that protects it all is also upgraded from Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the last phone to Gorilla Glass Armor. The company says it's like four times more scratch resistant versus the competition. But I can't stand that phrasing because like, what's the competition? What, is that, what does that mean? Which is why I specifically asked them multiple times, what's the actual difference between this glass and the last phone's glass? But for some reason, the company's just decided they don't want to make any specific comparisons, which makes this four times number 
completely useless as a stat. The other interesting aspect of this Gorilla Glass armor though, is that it should also be able to reduce screen glare by up to 75%. I'm always surprised how this company manages to seemingly remake glass every year and give it new features. But hey, I'm not complaining. The S24 Ultra's display does look absolutely drop dead gorgeous. So these are good spec bumps to what was already very much not broken. And I haven't even talked about the biggest one. The S24 Ultra is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip, which is probably the meatiest upgrade in the last five years, and the first time in recent memory where you can actually unambiguously say it is more powerful than the latest 